Hi there. We're going to get uh, down and dirty with Hess's law, and we're going to try and figure out what uh, Hess's law from the using enthalpies of formation. Uh, what does Hess's law tell us, and how can we use it to calculate anything that's uh, worth a damn? So, if we were to look according to Hess's law, as you see here, the net enthalpy change. Now we're using crazy words here. Enthalpy change is the uh, change in energy, the potential energy stored up between all the chemicals in a reaction. And so according to Hess's law, if we just look for a second, according to Hess's law, he would say that if we were to compare all of the energy that's stored between the bonds of calcium oxide and all of the energy that's stored between the bonds of H2O, hydrogen and oxygen, if we compare that energy to the total energy in the bonds after a reaction takes place, Hess's law simply says that we can take the energy from the products, that total energy, and the energy from the reactants, we can subtract those two energies and figure out what's the energy involved in the entire reaction. So the reaction is the change, delta, the change, that means the final minus the initial conditions. And what conditions are we looking at? We're looking at the amount of energy between all the bonds and the molecules. And so you can get the whole reaction's energy by doing exactly what Hess is Hess has said. Now, it's easier said than done, but it's not going to be that complicated because there is a formula that here that we can follow. You get some crazy letters. That's Greek letter delta for change. And this is capital sigma. It's a Greek letter. And it just signifies that you're going to take the sum of. So here we have the sum of all of the moles and molar enthalpies, or the energy, the enthalpy change, for each of the products. That's what the P stands for. And the enthalpy change of formation, what is the energy involved in forming all of the reactants? So you take all of the energy to form all the products, all of the energy to form all of the reactants, and subtract those two and you get your answer. OK, so we've gone through it twice. Let's actually get to the point. So here we've been given the reaction for the slaking of lime where we have calcium oxide and water react, and you're forming calcium hydroxide. So again, we're looking for the enthalpy of the reaction. How are we going to get that? Well, we're going to look at the products, and there's only one product here. So we need to take the moles of the product from our balanced reaction. So there's one here. So you have one mole, and then you need to have the enthalpy of formation, the molar enthalpy of formation for calcium hydroxide. You'll find that in the back of one of your standard chemistry textbooks. I've linked one on here. Although it's small, we can find calcium uh, oxide right here. It has a molar enthalpy negative 634.9. So we go, oh, we'll come back, negative 600. Oh, we looked up the wrong one, calcium hydroxide. It would help us, behoove us, to look up the right one. Calcium hydroxide is just above it, 986.1. That's a negative. Okay, so negative 986.1. That's for calcium hydroxide, and that's our only product. So now we've taken care of this term. So that's all of the energy of the products. Then you're going to subtract all of the energy of the reactants. And we've got two reactants. We have one mole of calcium oxide one mole of calcium oxide. Calcium oxide, we already underlined it just a second ago. It is rate, wow, I'm having trouble finding them today. Calcium oxide was 634.9, and that's a negative 634.9. So a negative 634.9. And our, uh, just move this down a little bit and read in the way. And so the next term we have is liquid water, and we have one mole of liquid water. So we go to our table and look up water as a liquid, and I see right here liquid water. You've got as a gas, it's 241.8, and as a liquid to form it, it is 285.8 as a negative. So 285.8, negative. And so now when we plug all of this in, that's going to tell us how much energy that we get
for the entire reaction. That's why it's delta HR for the reaction. So I'll bring up that calculator and we'll see how lined up we are. Turn it on, clear. So we have a negative 986.1 and we need to subtract, and I'll put the other two in brackets, uh, a negative 634.9 and negative 285.8, try again, 8, end of the bracket, and that gives us a negative 65.4, and those answers are all in kilojoules. So delta HR is a negative 65.4 kilojoules. That's the energy required. That's the enthalpy change of the reaction for the slaking of lime. Enthalpy change of the reaction. If we look critically at what the question asked us, however, it asked for the molar enthalpy. That means they want to know what is the energy per mole. Molar enthalpy is the HR for my reaction. So they want it per mole that's produced or of uh, slaking of lime. So you want it to compare it to the one mole of lime that we have. So you do the very simple task of taking your negative 65.4 kilojoules and dividing by the moles of lime, which is one mole. And so the molar enthalpy is the same as the enthalpy because there's one mole. So it's negative 65.4 kilojoules per mole. Again, to sum up what Hess's law has said, we've said it a few times now, Hess's law talks about taking the energy that it takes to form calcium hydroxide and compare that to the energy it takes to form both calcium oxide and water. Take your energy at the end, subtract the energy at the beginning, and that tells you how much energy was used to rea in, the, in the reaction. It tells you the difference in energy, hence change in enthalpy. I hope that helps you out a little bit. I'll try and post this up tonight.